What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here reviewing today Tekken 7. Imagine living in a world where billion dollar companies like Google and Microsoft decide to spend their money on crazy experiments like powerful robot armies and training strange cat girls to fight. Now let's say these big corporations grow bored of their nearly unlimited strength and decide to start a war across the planet between the two of them to see who is truly the stronger enterprise. It's this rather silly situation that the story of Tekken 7 takes place in, but let's be honest, if you're playing this game, it's probably not for the plot. The chances are that you're just here to pull off hyper-complicated 100-hit combos and dominate others online for fun. This series has been around for over 20 years, and in that time, it's grown and changed quite a bit. From its humble beginnings, the amount of heroes and villains has been expanded, we've gotten crazy locations to battle in, and multiplayer's become the main focus. With the release of Tekken 7, the franchise is easily better than it's ever been, and yet, there are some issues that stop this from being the masterpiece many of us hoped. If you've never experienced the glory of the Iron Fist Tournament, I want to break down what makes this game so different from other fighters. Normally, if you're playing something like Marvel vs. Capcom or Injustice, the buttons you press are just for light punches or tossing high blows. Tekken is unique in the fact that each key actually corresponds to a specific limb and how your standing can change how the hit lands. Say I'm playing as this ninja panda bear and I'm trying to corner my enemy against the wall. Attacking while going into a crouch allows me to do a rising set of strikes, locking my opponent into a defensive stance. However, when I'm playing as Harong, his kick combos have a very long reach but require that I have my right side turned to them at all times. The layers of combat are insanely deep, and while I love this as a person who's been enjoying Tekken for decades, I feel like this might be overly intricate for newcomers. This is really a project made completely for diehard fans, and in that aspect, it's pure perfection. A freshly introduced mechanic that helps matches feel slightly more balanced even against players that are very skilled is Rage. See how your health bar fades into red? When your character gets down to this point, they gain a glowing aura around their body. At this moment, you can execute a special attack that ignores incoming hits and unleashes a powerful super move. These rage blows are very, very easy to land, but I think that's what makes them so great. They make it so even when you're losing badly, there's always this glimmer of hope that you can turn the tide of battle and make a sweeping comeback. It can also lead to some controller-grippingly epic struggles, like when you're in an online competition and both fighters are equally good. As you chip away each other's life, it can become a race to see who can chain together their special with the most brilliantly lengthy combo to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Speaking of internet play, it is amazing how well it works. Compared to something like Street Fighter V that had literally broken online play for months, it's crazy that they got this functioning so well already. Before release, I put in several hours beating up other reviewers, but now, at launch, the servers are loaded with talented gamers, and despite this heavy stress, there doesn't seem to be any lag. It's genuinely impressive that I can link together grab moves, foot sweeps, and rolling dodges, all flawlessly without missing a frame because of errors. If you're not the ultra-hardcore type and want to stick with single player, your options are rather small. First off, there's story mode, which is flat-out silly. Seeing these Mega corporations vie for control of the globe is so over the top that you can't take it seriously. There are notes from a journalist talking about the horrors of conflict and the scars it leaves in your soul. And yet, right afterward, the game tells you to press punch to throw a little boy off a cliff. It is so laugh out loud funny, and I'm not sure that's what they're going for. Unfortunately, this humorous story is over in less than four hours, leaving you with only two other things to try in offline play. There's Arcade, which has you completing rounds against increasingly better opponents, and Treasure Hunter, a ladder-style match that lets you earn cash and cosmetic awards. Perhaps the strangest addition to Tekken 7 is fully customizable characters. This goes far beyond altering the color of outfits. You can give people machine guns, giant pizzas, or just make them look like an evil, sexy skeleton. Nina is one of my favorites to take in a battle, and assembling such a wacky costume was very entertaining. All around, the combat is fantastic, the pacing is insanely good, and the learning curve isn't too steep. What does feel weirdly lacking though with this game is that I wish we had more characters. It's not that we don't have a decently large roster, it's just that it's noticeably smaller than previous entries and we're missing some of the best brawlers in the series. While I do find it cool that we're getting new characters like Akuma, it just makes me think, where's Ana or Lai, or even Bruce? These are classic heroes that deserve a slot in the stellar game, and yet sadly they were left out. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Tekken 7 a 9 out of 10. 
If you're a super hardcore lover of fighting games and you're looking for that next great challenge, this is the ultimate treat for you. If you're just looking for some casual fun, you may want to stick with Injustice 2 or Mortal Kombat. Thanks so much for watching gamers, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But, do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. These are classic heroes that deserve a slot in this stellar game, and yet, they were sadly left out. Okay, I Oh, hey! I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.